Hi students, in this video we are going to discuss about proof for loss of refraction using Huygens principle. Let us consider a parallel beam of light is incident on a refracting plane surface x, y. Above the refracting surface we have the first medium. Here first medium is the rarer medium which has the refractive index n1. Below the refracting surface we have the second medium. Here second medium is the denser medium which has the refractive index n2. Here we have taken the plane wavefront AB. At the given time point A of the incident wavefront touches the refracting surface. So this ray will experience the refraction. Since it is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium that will deviate towards the normal as shown here. Here we have done the normal already. The angle between the normal and the incident ray is known as angle of incidence I and the angle between the normal and the refracted ray is known as angle of refraction R. The point A has refracted already but what about the point B? The point B is yet to travel a distance B B dash to reach the refracting surface. When the point B touches the refracting surface at point B dash, the point A would have reached the new point A dash in the other medium. Here we have to consider two distances B B dash and A A dash. From the diagram you can understand the length of B B dash is greater than length of A A dash. Can you understand why? Because to cover this distance light is travelling in the air medium. But to complete this distance A A dash, light is traveling in the medium too, that is denser medium. We know that already the denser medium speed of light is reduces. So here at the given time that covers more distance in the rarer medium and the same time light covers less distance in the denser medium. That's why B B dash is greater than A A dash. Here we have to join this new point A dash and B dash. Here we can get the another one wavefront A dash B dash which is in the medium 2. At the point B dash also another one refraction is taken place. What is the angle between the normal and the refracted ray? That is what is angle of refraction R. The two normals N and N dash are considered at the points where the rays L and M fall on the refracting surface as refraction happens from rarer medium to denser medium the speed of light is b1 and b2 before and after refraction so here the light is traveling in the velocity v1 in the denser medium light is traveling with the velocity v2 so v1 is greater than v2 now we can find the expression for v1 and V2. What is V1? Velocity of the light in the rarer medium. In the rarer medium we have the distance V2 V dash. So V1 that is equal to displacement by time. V V dash by given time is T. And what is the expression for V2? V2 is the velocity of the denser medium. In the denser medium what is the displacement? A A dash. So V2 that is equal to A A dash by same timing t. You can rearrange this expression t that is equal to b b dash by b1 and t that is equal to a a dash by b2. So both the equations are equal at the left hand side. So right hand sides should be equal. What is the right hand side? b b dash by b1 that is equal to a a dash by b2. So we can rearrange like this b b dash a a dash can be taken to let's say it is equal to v1 by v2 let us take this as an equation 1 now we have to prove the loss of refraction what is the first law the incident ray refracted ray and normal all want to be in the same plane so here incident rays refracted rays and the normal all are in a same plane so first law is proved the next one is a Snell's law. Sin i by sin r that is equal to ratio between the refractive indexes of two medium. 
for that we need the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction this incident wave front is perpendicular to the line la so here angle is 90 degree so what about this angle 90 minus i then what will be the angle between the incident wave front and the refracting surface that is i so how can we calculate this total angle the angle between the normal and the refracting surface is 90 degree minus we have to subtract this angle 90 minus i so 90 minus 90 plus i so we cancel so i is a remaining angle that is only the angle between the incident wave front and the refracting surface likewise there we have to find the angle between the refracting surface and the refracted wave front so here what is the angle 90 minus r because is perpendicular to each other this refracted ray and the refracted wave front are perpendicular to each other total angle is 90 from that you have to subtract this angle r so 90 minus r and how can you find this angle here the angle between the refracting surface and the normal is 90 degree so total angle is 90 degree 90 minus this angle want to be subtracted then only you can find this angle so 90 minus r so 90 minus 90 plus r so 1990 cancel so here what is the angle r now we can write the angle of incidence i so directly we can write n a l angle n a l further it can be written as 90 minus n a b 90 minus angle n a b so which is equal to angle b a b dash likewise angle of refraction directly how can we write r that is equal to n dash b m dash n dash b m dash further that is equal to 90 minus this angle n dash b dash a dash so that only we have marked this a dash b dash a we have to prove the Snell's law this sin i by sin r from the right angle triangles a b dash b and a a dash b dash what is the value of sin i sin i opposite side b b dash by what is the hypotenuse value here right angle is there so opposite side is a b dash divided by what is the value of sin r opposite side is a a dash by hypotenuse value here this is a 90 degree opposite value is a b dash so a b dash a b dash can be cancelled what is the remaining thing b b dash by a a dash with respect to velocity how can we write this know the expression for velocity velocity that is equal to displacement by time then what is the expression for displacement displacement that is equal to velocity into time so b b dash it is in a rarer medium in a rarer medium what is the velocity v1 so further it is equal to v1 what is the timing to reach from from b to b dash t likewise a a dash this is a distance traveled by the light in the denser medium then what is the velocity v2 so we can write v2 time is same so t itself t t can be cancelled now at the numerator and the denominator you are going to multiply speed of light c this expression further can be written as v2 can be taken to numerator and v1 can be taken to denominator so can be write c by b2 by c by b1 there will be no change in this value here c by 
V is the constant value which is called refractive index of the medium. So in this expression C by V2 that means refractive index of the second medium C by V1 that is the refractive index of the first medium. So it can be written as N2 by N1. So ultimately this expression can be written as sin I by sin R that is equal to refractive index of the second medium by refractive index of the first medium which is known as Snell's rule which can be written in a product form like this. So Huygens principle proves the loss of refraction. In the same way the loss of refraction can be proved for wavefront traveling from denser medium to rarer medium also. Here one important thing if the light of particular frequency travels through one medium to another medium its frequency remains unchanged. There will be a change only in the wavelength. This relation already we have written C by V1 that is equal to N1 and C by V2 that is equal to N2. So we have rearranged this equation. C is a constant here. Suppose constant is taken away means how can we relate the two quantities velocity and the refractive index they are inversely proportional to each other. Likewise with respect to frequency how can we write V1 that is equal to lambda 1 mu and V2 that is equal to lambda 2 mu because already we have discussed there will be no change in the frequency there will be a change in the wavelength only. For this two equations we can take the ratio then V1 by V2 that is equal to lambda 1 mu by lambda 2. So mu is cancelled. So how can we relate these two quantities? Speed of light is directly proportional to wavelength. So from this expression we can take the ratio between the velocities V1 by V2 which is equal to C N1 C by N1 divided by C by N2. So C C can be cancelled. So V1 by V2 that is equal to N2 by N1. That only we have written as inversely proportional to each other. So instead of V by V2 we can apply N2 by N1. So here we can write N2 by N1 also.